Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today is a big day for us because we are doing PCR, the polymerase chain reaction. I cannot emphasize enough how important this technique is for people who work with DNA. You will use it all the time to isolate pieces of DNA, to modify pieces of DNA, or to prepare DNA for sequencing. The star of PCR is DNA polymerase. We use it to do what it does best, replicate DNA. But not just any DNA polymerase will do. Your average DNA polymerase, like most enzymes, will denature at high temperatures. At 50 or 60 degrees, the protein melts, unfolds, and turns into spaghetti. As we'll see today, we need something that can take the heat. So, back in the old-timey days, like the 1970s, some clever people started isolating DNA polymerase enzymes from microbes living in hot springs, which are very hot. These bugs still need to replicate DNA, and they've evolved very special thermostable enzymes that will still work even when we heat them to very high temperatures. These days, PCR is so popular that companies sell different DNA polymerase variants with different properties, faster replication, lower error rates, and so on. Next, we need something for our DNA polymerase to replicate. This is called the template DNA. It could be genomic DNA that you've extracted from an organism. It could be a plasmid that you purified in a mini prep. Anything at all. Importantly, we need very little DNA to kickstart the reaction. Even literally one molecule can be enough. Next, we have to tell our DNA polymerase where to start. You see, the enzyme doesn't just bind to any old piece of DNA and start going. Instead, it can only add nucleotides to the three prime end of a growing DNA strand. It looks for places where the DNA double helix is partially formed, but with single-stranded DNA hanging off the side. We can create these points using primers, short pieces of single-stranded DNA that give the polymerase a place to start. A PCR reaction uses two primers, one on each side of the piece of DNA that we want to replicate. Finally, we need some free DNA base pairs to feed the polymerase. These are the nucleoside triphosphates, ATP, GTP, CTP, and TTP, that the enzyme uses to build the new DNA strand. That's four things. Template DNA, primers, nucleoside triphosphates, and DNA polymerase. We mix them all together, put them in a thermocycler, and make the magic happen. A thermocycler is just a machine that can heat or cool our test tubes to a programmed series of temperatures. By cycling through a series of temperatures, we can get the DNA to replicate over and over again. First, we heat everything up to 95 C, near boiling. At this temperature, the DNA double helix melts and all of the DNA becomes single-stranded. This is why we needed that fancy thermostable DNA polymerase from the hot springs. Your average polymerase would be destroyed by these conditions. Next, we cool the reaction down to about 55 C. At this temperature, the primers can bind to the template DNA at the position where the sequence matches. We call this process annealing. Then we heat it up again to about 72 C. This is the preferred temperature of the polymerase. So it does its thing, taking the free base pairs and adding them to the growing DNA strand. The forward primer replicates the top strand. The reverse primer replicates the bottom strand. And pretty soon, we've doubled our quantity of DNA. Now we just repeat the cycle. Heat to 95 and separate the DNA strands. Cool to 55 and bind the primers. Heat to 72 and replicate the DNA. And over and over and over. Each time we go through the cycle, we double the quantity of DNA. And now we just repeat the cycle. Heat to 95 and separate the DNA strands. Cool to 55 and bind the primers. Heat to 72 and replicate the DNA. And over and over and over. Each time we go through the cycle, we double the quantity of DNA. We get more and more until we run out of primer or until we run out of free base pairs to feed the polymerase. A typical PCR goes through 25 cycles and takes about two hours to complete. And now you know the magic trick. 
Once we had just a few molecules of DNA and now we have millions and millions. This is enough DNA to see on a gel, enough to determine the DNA sequence, enough to clone into a plasmid vector and transform into a cell. Modern biotechnology wouldn't be possible without PCR. It will reappear in most of your projects in one form or another. It can be a tricky protocol because it's so flexible. Different templates, different primers, different conditions, depending on exactly the kind of PCR product you want. But if you work in this field, you will probably do a lot of PCR, and practice makes perfect. And you can't spell perfect without PCR. So until next time, stay primed.